This is Molly. She's a little hedgehog who has soft tissue sarcoma cancer that was isolated in her paw. Unfortunately, she did have to get her arm amputated, which is why she currently only has one front paw. This is me. I'm going to build Molly a little wheelchair to help her get around while she builds up strength in her arm. This is the sketch for the wheelchair. I started off by drawing the sling, which is in the pink, and then the outer frame, which is in the teal. I wanted it to be lightweight, but still had enough support to hold Molly while she was walking and eating. I used the 3D modeling software called Fusion 360, where I was able to design this outer frame to curve around her body. The frame has two spokes on the sides to attach the wheels to. I made it at about half an inch in thickness, just so that it was still thin um, and lightweight, but had enough support to be able to be strong enough to hold Molly's weight. The frame was modeled to have wheels down at the bottom, and then everything was pretty much just rounded over um, just to make sure there were no sharp edges. I designed rails that were going to be attached to the outer frame. The rails were modeled to have slits into, in them, which would allow the strap from the sling to run through. Once the design was modeled, I was able to download the file, save it in my uh, slicer, and send it to my 3D printer. I have the Prusa i3 MK3 printer, and I've been using it for a couple years now. I printed two versions of the uh, frame, um, one in blue and one in pink. Once it was finished printing, I was able to pop it off the print bed. The prints did have some outskirting material um, that is easy to peel off. Uh, I did end up cutting it off and then uh, grinding it off as well um, with a sander. Once the pieces were finished, I was able to uh, pop the pieces together. The rails I ended up having to remodel because the joints were too thin and they cracked, but the frame was designed to kind of snap it together and then be held with either screws or rivets. I did end up choosing rivets just to make it a little bit more seamless uh, so the joints weren't so bulky. There's two holes uh, for adjustability, but I ended up going with the higher up one um, just because the one at the bottom was a little bit too low. And then this is just how those rails snap onto the outer frame. With the frame done, I moved on to the sling. I created a template just using a piece of paper. There's one hole for her good leg, and then um, where she is missing her leg, the sling is just solid. The sling ended up being about nine inches by three and a half inches with a one inch hole. The three fabrics that I chose was a nice fleece to line the edges and um, two stiffer materials closer to uh, like soft denim. I chose a denim just because it was uh, still had a lot of structure to it um, and it wasn't super fuzzy to where it would get uh, really dirty, um, but it was still nice and soft to where it wasn't going to um, cause any sort of uh, rubbing on her skin. I end up sewing the uh, pieces right sides together around the edge and then I flip it over and then sew the other edge closed. When I cut the hole, I uh, double checked to make sure that the hole's on the right side. Um, Molly lost her left leg so the hole needs to be at the top right corner of the sling. Um, and that hole is about one inch in diameter and about half an inch from the edge of the sling. I just drew it uh, with pen and cut it out. Um, I'm not worried about seam allowance here because I'm going to wrap the edge in fleece. So once the hole is cut out, I do take a strip of fleece. It's probably about five inches long and then I wrap the inside edge of the hole. 
I just hand stitch it on there because it's a lot easier than trying to get it through my sewing machine. And this is how the sling will look once it's actually stitched on there. You can see that I also added some fleece to that top edge of the brace and that's also just to help um, protect Molly's skin where she might be bending over the edge. Um, and to do that, I just took another strip of the fleece, um, pulled it a little bit, and then just sewed it across the top, top edge. Once the uh, base of the sling is finished, obviously this is just a, a showpiece, um, it's gonna fit nicely in the outer frame, but we need something to connect the sling to the outer frame. So that's where the straps come into place. So I have a strap in the front and in the back. Um, the front is the shorter end of the, the wheelchair, um, and the straps are about nine inches long by half an inch. Um, this is just kind of a, um, a mock template that I used. Once the straps were fully, fully sewn, they ended up about being about half an inch thick. Um, and how I sew the straps is kind of similar to the body where I sewed three sides and then flipped it inside out or right side out and then um, top stitched the other side. So the straps were sewn on to the uh, base of the sling with about two inches uh, free from the end. Um, and the whole middle section of both straps is sewn down with um, Velcro on top of it. Uh, the back Velcro is about five inches where the front Velcro is about four inches. And then the side pieces are about two and a half inches. Um, and then the one other side is about one inch. The side with the hole is where you want the longer straps to be just to give it some more adjustability. And then there's also some Velcro on the um, top, obviously, to close it. You want the hook always to be on the base of the sling and then the soft loop to be on either the inside or the straps. Um, that way, if uh, it does end up hitting the hedgehog, it's the soft and not the um, rough piece of the Velcro that's going to be uh, in contact with it. And then you can just feed the straps through the outer frame of the brace um, to connect the two pieces together. And that's kind of how you adjust the brace. Um, you can kind of loosen or tighten those straps. Just for fun, I decided to add Molly's name to the back of the sling. Um, so I just used my Cricut um, and found a font that I liked. I ended up going with this um, font that had the heart in it. Um, and I, um, as I said, I just printed it out on my Cricut and then ironed it on to the sling, um, which you can see in the uh, in a picture coming up. Uh, once it's done cutting, you can peel off the back of it and then iron it onto the sling. You do have to make sure that it is um, inside or mirrored um, so that when you iron it on, it's right uh, right side. When I attached the wheels onto the outer frame, I used some rivets and then some epoxy putty, but you can kind of see that they were a little loose. So to, to tighten them up, I just took some wire and wrapped it in between the rivets and the washers. Um, and I ended up using a thicker wire um, on one side and then just some twine on the other side. Uh, and to cover the uh, wire and the twine up, I'm gonna take some more of the epoxy putty um, or epoxy sculpt and use that to um, secure everything in. Um, you can see that I put epoxy putty on the inside of the outer frame and I also painted it uh, teal um, while I was waiting for some of the other stuff to um, dry. So I'm just mixing the uh, epoxy sculpt and smushing it onto where the rivet is um, and connecting the rivet to the washer will just make sure that the um, wheels uh, don't loosen up So this is the completed wheelchair. I'm gonna have to send the chair to Molly um, to try it out, but I believe that she'll do really well with it. Um, she's been handled a lot, so she is kind of used to people touching her and picking her up. I will update everybody on um, Molly and how she's doing with the brace uh, in another video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, 